Hello friends and welcome to my channel. My name is Jess, I'm the creator of Pink Rex, and today we're gonna to be making some moss supports, moss pole, moss board, all the good things. If you're new here, I make videos about plants, video games, and lots more. So if you like that kind of content and you haven't done this already, please offer to make the like button a latte, but then place a heaping spoonful of grounds directly into their cup. Also, please subscribe to the channel down below and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of my future uploads. It's gonna be some really icky coffee. Due to the rising popularity of plants like Monstera deliciosa and Monstera anansonii, and pretty much any other climbing philodendron, moss poles have become kind of a hot item, but there's a little bit of misunderstanding surrounding them. This is my slightly quite dusty, Raphidophora decursiva. And it is on kind of a makeshift moss pole that I extended. This part is what it was on when I got it and it was only this tall and now it has grown up kind of in a leggy way along the addition that I've made. The reason it hasn't latched onto this moss pole the way that you would expect it to in nature is because this moss pole isn't really super functional compared to what it's supposed to be. So this is just dry moss on a little tube. I think the bottom part is a PVC tube wrapped in cocoa coir and or cocoa husk, cocoa husk. And then the top part is a bamboo stick wrapped in Spanish moss, which actually isn't moss at all. It's a type of air plant and some twine. This is just what I had done with the materials I had available at the time. I've had this plant for a couple years now and I have never repotted it. I have never done anything with it and I have chopped it a few times. But aside from that, it's just been doing its thing. But I have noticed that rather than continuing to get these <sighs> moss falling on me, one thing I have noticed is that this plant has stopped having these big, beautiful fenestrated leaves. It has started having runners that end with this. And this is because of two things. It's because where it was sitting, the plant just wasn't getting enough light to have these big, happy leaves. And the second reason is because the moss pole is dry. <laughs> I'm pretty terrible about remembering to keep moss poles moist. And this one actually wasn't intended to be kept moist. I just put it on there as a temporary fix and it ended up staying that way for way longer than it should have. So today we're going to be making this lovely plant a proper moss pole. And here's a couple that I've made recently. So the way I make my moss poles is I have a bamboo support on the back and I have just moistened sphagnum moss running down the length of the pole, obviously. It is wrapped in hardware mesh, PVC coated or vinyl coated hardware mesh specifically, because if you have the stainless steel kind, it'll rust. I do have kind of as an experiment, a little wicking cord running three quarters of the way down this way. My goal with that is that I could in theory put it like in a little jar or something and it would pull water down through the moss pole really effectively. The last thing is that the back is sealed together with little zip ties. These are just four inch zip ties from, I think I got these from Fleet Farm for like $3. This is more of what people think of when they think of a moss pole. This is gonna be for one of my shingling plants. I have a couple that I'm looking to get on moss poles soon or on moss boards is what I would call this. Again, your supplies are going to be a bamboo stick to hold it up, hardware mesh of your choosing, just make sure it's plastic coated or coated. You could also use just regular plastic mesh, although it won't give it the structural support that hardware mesh offers. You're gonna need zip ties to hold everything together and you're going to need moistened sphagnum moss. Optionally, you can add a wicking cord down three quarters of the way, just like a couple feet of wicking cord. So I purchased a roll of hardware fabric from Menards. It's eight feet by, this must be like three feet. It's quite cheap if you can find it at um, places like Home Depot and Lowe's. I wasn't able to find small quantities of what I needed. Again, specifically of the plastic coated kind because otherwise it'll rust. This project is going to make a proper mess of your workspace. So be prepared for that. I'm just gonna start by taking out a piece of wicking twine, wicking cord, whatever whatever you choose to call it, whatever feels right to you, I don't know. And measuring it out to make sure it's going to reach most of the way along the moss pole. So that's probably about the length I want. And then just like the other one, I do want it, well, pretty much right now. I do wanna have it kind of come up and out so I could maybe stick it into something or if I choose to extend the moss pole later on, I can do that without having to worry about tying anything together too extremely or anything like that. And this is thicker wicking cord than I would prefer to use. I would prefer to have about half this thickness, but this is what I have right now. So this is what we're using. <laughs> Once you've got that situation figured out, really don't need the scissors anymore. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to decide is if you want um, a round moss pole or if you wanna make a moss board. 
Moss boards and moss poles both work really well for climbing plants, um, but for shingling plants, like a lot of types of Rifidophora or Skindapsis, you're going to need a moss board. They will shingle up a moss pole, but it won't be as nice and big and open and stuff. They won't look as nice, <laughs> long story short. I think I got these at Fleet Farm as well. I think they were like $4, so they're not terribly expensive at all. These ones are pretty long because I knew I was going to need a pretty long support for the Rifidophora that I'm making a pole for. So I went with the, with the longer size. There is a couple of sizes that you can choose from. The previous ones were two feet, I think. That's a, that one, that one looks pretty good. There we go. Boom, perfect. Now that we've got that taken care of, I wanted this one to be extra long because I know I'm gonna wanna extend it pretty soon. Um, so that's just me planning ahead for that extra length of moss pole that it's gonna need. This one is going to be the round one. I'm gonna start by choosing one side and just folding all of the little stabby prongs down. You can leave them up, but I like to fold them down because it's easier on your hands later on if you go to pick it up and you forget they're there. So I'm just gonna bend in the prongs along one side with these guys. And actually I'm gonna do the other side because those ones are all a bit longer. It is easier to bend them in when they're longer, so. Keep that in mind, but you're just going along and bending them in so that they don't poke through your hand later on. And this part does take a little while. Cutting out the hardware fabric also takes a little while. Again, you can use just plastic mesh, should you so choose to. You do whatever your heart desires. No, birds. Now is not a good time. Can you come back later? Ah. Scared him. Whoa, I'm halfway there. All right, you're just gonna go ahead and make it into as even of a little rolled shape as you can. It doesn't really work to roll it on the desk the way that you instinctively want to roll things. If you're a human and you've ever made anything with Play-Doh, just bending it and making sure that it's it's gonna be an even shape, an evenly roundy shape. But I would say. You know, that seems sufficiently roundy. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and open it back up. I'm gonna take some of my moss and just fill up some of the main portion of the moss pole. It doesn't need to be a ton. I think with moss poles, you can definitely choose to like pack them really tightly full and it might make it so it's harder for water to reach. So I'm just, I'm packing it so it's gonna be full but not super tight. And when you're laying it down, keep in mind that we're gonna put a little wicking cord in the middle. If you're not putting a wicking cord, just fill it up to your heart's content <laughs> at this step, because we're gonna be putting another layer in there. But for right now, this is just enough to cover the outside edges. I might put just a little bit more along the middle, you know, just in case, I don't know, because I want to, not for any reason in particular. I think that that seems pretty good. So here is how it's looking. It just has like a nice layer along the bottom and starting up the outside edge. And now I'm gonna take one of my wicking cords and I cut again a little bit extra long. So I'm gonna actually have this be the bottom. So this is gonna be the bottom of the moss pole and then coming up this way is the top. And really, I probably cut these a little bit longer than I should have, <laughs> but that's okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and cover up the cord from there. And you can pack it a little bit fuller. Ooh, nice root in there. I should mention, I get my sphagnum moss from Lowe's. It's roughly $5 a brick, and there's a good amount that comes in a brick. It's a brand called Better Grow, and they have really good quality moss from what I've found for a good price. Can't beat it. I would say that that is pretty good. That is a good amount of moss to have in there. Because when we close it up, we are going to overlap a couple of the squares and that's gonna pull it tighter. So we're gonna need four zip ties at least. I don't like to go too crazy on the zip ties because it's just wasteful after a certain point. So four zip ties to hold it shut. I took out five, but an extra one just in case. And again, you're just gonna kinda wanna make sure you can feel that it's all pretty even in there. Actually, I'm gonna add a little bit more right there. Glad I checked. And pull it together, overlap just one square, and that's gonna help 
hold it together nicely. And it'll help it when we're trying to even out the shape. I just poked my hand. Maybe I should be wearing gloves. Hmm? Come on, work with me here, bud. So it's gonna be hard at first, and then as you add zip ties, it'll get way easier. But just line up those first two squares as best you can and take it and just loop it through. Tighten it a little bit, but don't tighten it all the way because we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we have everything lined up nicely in the end. And just in case, you know, you're a human and you <laughs> make a mistake lining something up, then you can always go back and fix it. I like to start with the ends. So I started with the bottom there and here's the top because it's where the wicking twine is coming out. And I'm gonna just take and bend the end of it. Bend. <laughs> So it's just kind of like a little hook. And then I've got these two squares right here on the end. And I'm just gonna take and loop it through those two squares. You can loop it through just one or two. It doesn't really make a huge difference. And um, then you take the zip tie and just give it a small amount of tighten just to hold it in place. And then we're gonna add two equally spaced in the middle and then it'll be all done. These ones you can loop, you don't have to loop through both um, sides of the square. Again, I'm gonna bend it, some moss on my thumb. Give it a little bend, make it a little hook. Try to figure out your like kind of halfway mark and then do halfway in between that and the one you just did. So like, I don't know, like right here, it's probably good. Closer to the middle if you have to, if you're not quite sure. Just go with the middle, or you could put one in the middle and then measure it from there. Whatever makes you happy. Now I'm just going to loop it underneath, and then since we made that little hook, it comes out super nice. And push it together, and tighten it up just a little. Tighten it up just a little. There we go. <laughs> Not too much, because again, we're going to make sure everything's even at the end here. And then one more time, lining up those squares. Line up the squares, make your little hook. I think you could just bend it once, but I like to bend it twice, I don't know. And, oh, come on. This is tougher than, uh, than I thought it was gonna be for the last one, not gonna lie. Link it onto itself like that. And then give it a little tighten. You can tighten that one a little bit more. And then just go along and evenly tighten them, making sure that you're lined up all the places you need to be. And that one is being wonky because I had one of the wires bent funky. So that was my bad. Oh. One of the, yeah, one of the wires poking through on the pokey end, pokey outside edge. Got my bottom one right here. Voila, quite nice. And you can give them one extra tug that way just to make sure they're all super duper snug on there. And, ah, that worked so well. That went so well. Nice job. That's what we should be looking like, zip tied together. And we'll trim all the excess zip tie off on the at the end here. And now we're gonna go ahead and close up the bottom. So hardware mesh comes with a little piece of wire wrapped around it to hold it together, hardware fabric. And I can't find it. I don't know what I did with it. So here's some floral wire. <laughs> You could even, you could just use fishing line if you wanted to, something that just can get wet and isn't going to rot. Right, so I've got my little piece of floral wire. I'm gonna flip it so that you can see what I'm doing hopefully on this end. And I'm just gonna make like a little X through the bottom. And you don't have to do like an exact X, obviously. Maybe I'll even do like a little Z shape, I don't know. Just something that's gonna cover the bottom a little bit so the moss isn't gonna fall out in big chunks. Cause it might do that over time, you never know. And then with the middle here, just cross them over in the middle. I said just cross them over in the middle like it was gonna be an easy thing. And make sure it's not gonna go anywhere. And then I'm actually gonna tuck it up into where the moss is, just cause I don't wanna accidentally impale my hand. <laughs> no, life happens. I'm going to add just a smidge more moss in here, just to make sure that whatever plant I add in is gonna have enough moss to grab onto. And then any final adjustments you'd like to make to the overall roundiness of your moss pole. <laughs> and there we go. 
Now we're gonna add the little steak it's going to be held up with. Here's my bamboo steak of choice. You can use whatever you would like. And actually I'm gonna cut off, I'm actually gonna cut off the little zip ties here right now because otherwise they might be in the way and I don't really want them in the way. It's not the move, dude. Just make sure you're gonna leave enough stick on the bottom that it's gonna sit in your pot nicely and actually hold it up. Some people do end up like zip tying the stick to the pot <laughs> somehow or like tying it to the pot so it stays where it is. That is always an option. And make sure it's nice and straight. You wanna try to line it up all on the same row because if you don't, it's gonna get kind of wonky. <laughs> And just go through and hook it at points that have a little bit of, of a ridge to them if you can. If you're using a bamboo stick, it'll just help hold it in place a little bit better. This one you can tighten pretty much almost all the way right away. And if you, you know, don't like where you place it, you can just cut the zip ties and wiggle it around a little bit. Not a big deal. And I'm gonna loop it under, under, And pull it nice and snug. Not all the way snug yet if you don't want to. I don't know if it would make a huge difference. Making that little hook on there. Loop it under. Oh, come on. And then pull it snug. There. And then you can tighten them up once you're sure you like the placement of them. I'm not terribly worried about where they're placed because if I have to move them, I have to move them. And there we go. One obnoxiously large moth pole prepared and ready for the Rufitophora. Haha, -ha. I'm not gonna make a second moss board. I'll just show you the one I made. I have it connected on the back in the same fashion. You fold it over, the wicking cord is run most of the way through it, and it ends like right about here. So that's gonna do it for this video, guys. If you got something out of the video today and you haven't done this already, please offer to make the like button a latte, but then place a heaping tablespoon of coffee grounds directly into their cup. Also, please remember to subscribe to the channel down below and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of my uploads. If you'd like, you can find me on Instagram or on TikTok. I'm under Pink Rex with two X's on both of those platforms. Lots of good planty content on TikTok. Go check it out. It's lots of fun. I don't know. I do lives there. Please drop a comment down below and let me know if you like this method, if you've tried this method, if you agree with my method, if you have tips on how I could make it better, or if you have a different planty kind of topic you'd like me to cover. So whether I see you on one of the platforms I just listed or down in the comment section below, please comment something. Just know I really appreciate you being here and I still have no idea what I'm doing. Okay, thanks, bye. This looks like one of those things you could play like croquet with. Oh, like a croquet bat. Do they still call it a bat? I know nothing of croquet. <laughs>